I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comics and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Batman issue number 24. Bruce Wayne is still attempting to put the pieces back together after the events of the button. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, as the comic opens up, we check on in with Batman as well as the newly healed Gotham girl. It seems that Psycho Pirate did the trick and her mind is all fixed up now. Granted, now she has the much bigger undertaking, and that is decided what the hell she's gonna do next with her life. If you'll recall, and to borrow an RPG term on this one, Gotham Girl is a total glass cannon. Oh sure, she has Superman level strength and flight abilities, but the more she uses those powers, the quicker she'll die. A fate that already claimed her rather unfortunately named brother Gotham. She decides to ask Batman for advice, and again, if you've been reading Batman for any number of years, you'll know that he's not exactly great on giving advice when it matters. He says that the choice is ultimately up to her, but at the same time, he remembers when he was choosing to become a superhero, he asked his closest friend and confidant, Alfred, for advice. So, you know, he can kind of appreciate things coming full circle, but he also knows full well that even when he asked Alfred for advice all those years ago, he still knew what he was going to do, and it didn't really matter. Gotham Girl also ends up asking a number of really personal questions that force Batman to soul-search in a way that he never really has before. He says that, you know, the reason he's Batman, he doesn't do it because he enjoys it or anything. It does it because, well, he is Batman. He doesn't have much of a choice. He is, at the end of the day, ultimately a pretty broken human being who's really given up on having any semblance of a normal life, even if when people like his father from an alternate universe tell him to give up the cowl. In a way, Batman and Gotham Girl have more in common than you might think. Being Batman will ultimately kill Bruce, but at the same time, he can't stop either. Furthermore, Gotham asks Batman if his life is so miserable, if he has such crosses to bear, does he ever do anything for himself? Does he ever allow himself any shred of happiness ever? And you know what? That's one heck of a question, and for that we have to switch on back over to Catwoman, who has been a major fixture of this Tom King Batman series since it began. Honestly, for the most part, I was kind of confounded by Tom King's use of Catwoman, but it's here in this issue as Batman attempts to chase her down. It all begins to sort of make sense. You see, Batman once again goes out of his way to remind Selina about their first meeting in the Golden Age when she attempted to steal steal a rare diamond. Well, wouldn't you know it, Bruce Wayne bought that diamond not long after. Because it was even at that point he knew that Selina was special and that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. Yep, that's right everyone, this issue winds down with Batman proposing to Catwoman. Does she say yes? Has Batman totally lost it? Is this union doomed to fail? Well, we don't know because that's pretty much where the comic ends. We're not gonna pick up again with this until War of Jokes and Riddles is over, but overall I can proudly say, didn't see this coming. So there you go, everybody, Batman number 24, in many ways a big old exclamation point to Tom King's work on Batman so far. Now, I've stated in other videos since it started, my feelings on this series have run hot and cold, but I can tell you, I actually did quite enjoy this issue. Well, plenty of writers in the past have shown you can wring a ton of great material by piling on more and more misery and tragedy into the personal life of Batman, Tom King chooses to go the other way completely. He actually tries to bring in a little light and a little joy into Bruce Wayne's life. And I mean, really, when I stop and think about it, Batman hasn't had a steady love interest for so long, this is actually feeling like something fresh and new and innovative. I even really enjoyed the whole character essay stuff Tom King does with Batman here in this issue, which is rare for me because I know I didn't quite agree with the messages of I Am Suicide, and there were definitely times when I couldn't help but feel Tom King was stealthily taking the piss out of Batman, but here, right here, Batman is probably the most relatable I've seen him in a very long time. Will this new romantic relationship actually pay off for Batman and Catwoman, or is it doomed to fail like every other Batman romance we've seen before? Only time will tell that, but I will say this much, it's been a while since we've had a good old-fashioned superhero wedding, so definitely color me interested for that. Until then, I would give this story an 8.5 out of 10. So there you have it, everybody, a very romantic issue of Batman. I hope you enjoyed it, and while I have your attention, why not check out some of these other videos I've done? 
done throughout the week. They're not nearly as romantic, but I'm sure you'll like them. And if you want to show me some love and also stay up to date on when the newest videos come out, might I recommend following me on Twitter, at Cape Joel, or checking out my other social media feeds down below in the description. And also you, yes you, will you become a patron? For as little as a dollar a month, you can support the growth of myself and this channel while also getting exclusive videos and podcasts. Well, you can do that too. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again in another video. Bye-bye.